Good morning, I'm Jim Moore, and this is Justice for America, the program where we dive into social issues from a biblical perspective. I'm glad that you tuned in <clears throat> today, excuse me. Uh, I'm going to ask you to like and subscribe uh, the program today. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, just go ahead and like it. Make sure you hit the bell so that you can get notified when these programs come on. I try to reach out to people, let them know we're about to do a program, but it doesn't always work. All right. So like, subscribe and hit the bell. All right. So today we're talking about a very important event that's happening today and some of the issues surrounding it. Um, I hope I'm going to be able to give you some stuff that you won't see other places. But the Kamala Trump debate happens tonight. And it happens at 6 o'clock West Coast, 8 o'clock Central. That's where I'm at in Texas, 9 o'clock Eastern. So they always advertise the East Coast because that's where it's happening. 9 o'clock East Coast, okay? 8 o'clock my time, did I get this right? 6 o'clock West Coast, 6, 8, 9. All right, so we're going to talk about that debate tonight and some of the issues surrounding that. And then we're going to talk about the Venezuelan gangs that are rapidly accelerating in the country. So you're not going to want to miss this program. Stick with me to the end, and we're going to jump right in it. So let's go to the debate tonight first. So I'm going to try to give you my opinion on what I think is going to happen. Um, I am very glad that they are going to be doing the debate with a few of the issues like they did with President Biden and uh, Donald Trump. And um, I mean, these are the two candidates. And it's it, to me, it's a no brainer. Uh, if you want more of what we've had the last four years, then vote Kamala. If you want what we had the four years Prior to that, vote Trump. That's, you know, and again, every, well, you're not supposed to say that. No, I, I know, I know, I know, but I'm saying it anyway. So there. <laughs> okay. I think what you're going to see is a lot of rhetoric on Kamala's side. Now, Kamala, I call her Kamala the comedian, chameleon, not comedian, maybe. Kamala the chameleon, not only because it rhymes, but because that's been her, her lifestyle. I'm not saying that to mock her and make fun. I don't do images of her with funny things on her. Okay. I might send them back and forth privately, but yeah. So, but the the way she presents herself is very much a chameleon blends into its environment. And Kamala has done that throughout her career. Whatever she feels, and this is my statement I'll make, here's my official statement. Whatever she feels needs to be said in order to acquire the approval of the majority, the people that her base that she's leading to, that is what she will say. That is why right now she is changing her on video statements about her policy, air quotes, um, so dramatically. It's up to, I don't know, nine or 10 different major, major issues of gun rights, border patrol, um, Fracking. I mean, the list goes on and on of stuff. She's come out and said, I am absolutely against this or for it. Now she is absolutely 180 degrees flipped. In some cases said, I never said that. Okay, So that would make you a liar if you come on and say that I am for or against one thing and then come back and change your mind. Now, it's one thing to change your mind. It's one thing to say, hey, I've changed my mind about it. Then go ahead, change your mind. I'm actually for that. I think people ought to have a right to learn and to grow and to change your mind, right? Open-mindedness. But then you ought to say that's what you've done. You ought to say, you know what, I believe this way. And now I don't believe that way because I think that would be detrimental. Whatever. But give a reason. Don't just flip flop and then pretend like you never said it. So I think what you're going to see is some very, I'm smiling at my wife as she leaves. <laughs> hey, Mike, God bless you. What you're going to see is some very prepackaged. Um, here's a great example they're, when they're asking uh, Trump about uh, what he's doing for debate prep, the answer is what prep? <laughs> and one thing for sure, for good or bad, when he speaks, he shoots from the hip and he says what's on his mind and his heart and, and doesn't have to have a scripted, well, let me look at what we wrote down so I can answer this question. Yeah, that's going to be Kamala. It's going to be him. Now, in doing so, 
like I'm doing right now. This is not scripted. Okay, I am coming to you live and unscripted. And can't, hopefully I don't put my foot in my mouth and say something uh, stupid and I don't edit. I don't go back and take something out. I, I think I may have once or twice, but very rarely do I do that. Anyway, I, the unscripted part from Trump sometimes gets him in trouble, for sure. But we're not voting for personality. We're voting for policy. Remember that. All right, so that's going to happen tonight. Let's jump into the first uh, link. Now, recently, let me say it this way. If you think that the attempt to silence opposing views as per the narrative of the media and the left, you think that's gone away, you are sadly mistaken. The, the playbook is that we push the envelope. So we see how far we can go. We gauge the amount of pushback, okay? So we try to shut down everybody's YouTube and X and whatever or, or tell them this, this goes against our policy. Of course, you'll never know. I've gone against the policy and gotten bumped for a couple of times. And when I try to find out what it is I did, they won't tell you because they want to maintain the ability to just bump you whenever they want to bump you. Anyway, if you think that's gone away. So the playbook is that they do that. They gauge the amount of public pushback. This is why you must push back. And then they'll back off for a while. And every, now the tendency is to think, oh, we won. Yay. They, they're backing up. Yay. Free speech is, is back again. No. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying it won't ever. I'm just saying it's important because they'll come back. And so that's what they're doing again. This first link, I'm, I'm trying to, I, I, I do tend to ramble a lot, but I'm trying to be concise. Come on, I don't see anybody talking. I up, you guys. I know there's a bunch of you on there. Start talking. Let's get the algorithms going. Alexa, who should I vote for? Have you seen this? Okay, it's all over the internet. Different people, a variety of people. Now this one's six minutes long, but you could watch one minute and get the point. Um, we'll say to Alexa, they'll say, hey, Alexa, should I vote for, or no, here's the question. I got, I want to get this right. The question asks pretty much the same question every time. Alexa, why should I vote for Donald Trump? And Alexa responds in some way. Now this is probably changed now. They've probably gone on and changed this after they, here again, this is the thing. Let's push the envelope, see the, how much kickback we get. You know, it used to be you could do this stuff and nobody would even know because we didn't have the internet. Now everybody knows. Okay, if there's a lot of pushback and it goes viral and everybody's upset about it, then they'll they'll erase it. You get what I'm saying? So these links that I'm showing you may either be taken off or they'll go back to Alexa and do, redo her program. Anyway, they say, Alexa, why should I vote for Donald Trump? She says, I am not allowed to give my opinion. I, I'm I'm not quoting on any political party, blah, 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 in her sweet, wonderful voice. And then same person, no cut, okay? There's no, there's no break. <clears> the <throat> first one I saw was a lady. She says, elect, you know, because so they're done, right? She gave her spiel about Donald Trump. In other words, she said, I can't say anything, you know, good or bad about him. I'm not allowed to do that. And then the very same question inserted Kamala, Alexa, why should I vote for Kamala Harris? Well, because Kamala Harris is this and she's done a lot. I mean, she absolutely does the opposite thing and gives all the reasons why you should vote for Kamala. Now, you know, one of my biggest prayers, people, is just that we won't be stupid anymore. <laughs> Come on, somebody say amen. That we will just open our eyes. That we won't be so determined to fight for our position that we are unwilling to see the unvarnished truth, the plain truth right in front of our eyes, okay? If you come to the place where you refuse to do that, then you're deceived and you need to be reprogrammed, <laughs> okay? Deprogrammed, all right. Hey, Mike, thanks, guys. Keep talking, keep, keep giving your comments. Love to hear your comments. Oh, and I want to mention too, after the program's over, you can go back and leave some more comments. I really, I look at every one of them. I don't have time to answer them all. But that's why I do the like and the hearts and all that. So, you know, I do look them. I do take the time. I want to know, okay? Unless you're mean and nasty and use bad language, then I'll block you. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's number one. You're going to want to watch that one. Number two. Now, this one, again, is about the idea of Kamalia. 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 
Kamala being a chameleon. Now again, I'm not I'm not just like bad mouthing the person. I know that a lot of people do that. They feel like that's the thing to do. We just want to create this, you know, this hatred. That, you know, and I don't do that. I don't believe in that. But I also believe in telling the truth. Number two, a minute and eight seconds long. A lot of you guys like Vivek. I love Vivek. Okay, um, I think he would have made a great president. Yeah, I don't even want to go into all that because, you know, I'm not looking for a debate on that. Oh, he'd be better. She'd be better. Somebody, that's not what I'm, I'm just saying he's a truth teller. He shoots straight. He tells it like it is. He's one that I believe, hey, Isaiah, nice to have you. I believe he's one that you can count on at the very least to declare what he believes to be the truth. None of us have 100% truth. None of us do. I don't care how smart you think you are. You don't know the tr uh, everything there is to know, Okay. We're all learning, we're all growing, and so on. But to speak out what you believe is truth is right. And so Vivek does this. He talks about Kamala, what he knows about. Not just because he doesn't want her to win, but because these are the facts. You need to watch this one. I, again, had a difficult time because I want to write down what I consider to be the must-sees. Honestly, these are all must-sees, okay? But yeah, there's a few that I write that down. Number three, I have some real problems with Tim Waltz. Okay, are you ready to hear? I believe the man has, let's just say, a bad spirit. Okay, I've seen some, the way he conducts himself, the way he talks, some of his mannerisms. I'm telling you, I believe there is something definitely off there. Okay, that's my opinion. Maybe I'll get struck for that one. But I am telling you, I think it's not good. But. Here's something you're going to want to see. This is a minute long. Actually, it's a minute plus. It's um, Steve Turley. Some of you know who Steve Turley is. Uh, what does it say? Vote early. Thank you. Look at what Linda's writing. Linda's writing, vote early. Okay, that's very important. A lot of people have been saying this. Uh, there is a possibility for corruption in elections this year, like there has been every single election. Don't let anybody put this down. Election denier. <laughs> Every single election has had its level of corruption, every one of them, probably to the dawn of time. You know, you've got, you've got a few cavemen, not, not that I believe in cavemen, but you've got a few of them sitting around taking a vote and one guy's trying to, you know, it's always, so, so for someone to come out and go, how dare you not believe the results of election? That's just, that's just plain outright stupidity. I'm, I'm just saying. So anyway, um, voting early is a great way to make sure your vote actually gets counted. Thank you, honey. I, <clears throat> I'll leave that alone. This video number three, I don't know if you've seen this. This is perhaps one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Okay, Steve Turley talks for 30, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, but really it's the first minute. You get to see the picture, okay, of most of Tim Waltz's immediate family donning t-shirts that say Waltz's or Waltz family, I think, for Trump. Even his own family has said that guy has no business being second in command. Now, it's one thing to go, yeah, I think I'll vote for the other guy when it's your uncle or brother or dad. I mean, come on, if I were running for president, I would hope my family would not be so against me running that they would buy t-shirts saying they were. I would, you know, but they did. In other words, these guys really, 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 really believe Tim Walsh should not be elected. Now, if his own family that knows him better than probably any other American or person on the planet says, no, uh-uh, uh-uh, don't do it, okay? And you need to see this there. And also more and more Democratic leaders uh, state Senate leader, here's one of them that's on that if you want to watch beyond one minute, uh, is state Senate leader. This is a high position uh, named Gloria Romero. I forget which uh, state she's from, uh, has, has said, I've had enough. Many Democrats are doing this, not because they're just wanting to jump on the winning team, although a lot of them are going like, this is, he's going to win, okay? I don't believe a lot of it's that. I believe a lot of them are good people. The idea that all people in the Democratic Party are demons is, is, I'm sorry, I just keep saying stupid. They tell me I shouldn't say that. Ridiculous. Okay. There is no party of people. There is no genre of people where they're all 
super evil unless it's maybe, you know, Nazis or KKK or whatever. You get what I'm saying. Don't do that. Don't be foolish, okay? Speak the truth, even if it, it doesn't promote your narrative as much as you'd like it to, okay? So I think a lot of them are leaving because they, they're tired. They're like, oh, well, maybe this will turn around. I mean, this has been happening for a decade. We've been getting crazier and crazier with the, you know, sexual immorality and the provo pro get, making our stand for everything that's evil, really. And it's been gradual. It hasn't been all at once, but it has come to the place where the entire democratic as a party, as a machine, is corrupt and defiled. Now, that is true to a, a lesser, a much lesser degree in the Republican Party because they've embraced some, in my opinion, more righteous thing. A lot of believers now. Anyway, that's the video. Watch it. You're going to be glad you watched it for nothing else to see the picture. Um, number four. Now, why am I putting this in here? This has to do with a man, <clears throat> shows a man in the UK, two minutes and 51 seconds long, who was arrested for refusing to believe and declare to his classmates uh, the whole, you know, uh, multiple gender, it's okay to cut your kids' bodies up. Yeah, that's totally fine. What kind of insanity is that? That an adult would give permission or even help provoke the surgical removal of body parts of their child. I'll tell you that is the vomit of hell. That is the vomit of hell. And anybody that's so insane to do it, here's my opinion, they ought to be charged with child abuse because it is child abuse. All right, there we go. Jesus, help me say your words. <laughs> I'm telling you, people have gone insane. It, yeah. Anyway, so remember I told you free speech is, is pretty much lost now in the United Kingdom. And it is this move is reaching its tentacles into our country. Don't think it's not, okay? If something doesn't happen, you will face things like this unless you just shut up and crawl in a corner and die. And of course, that's what Christians are supposed to do, right? Just shut up and be silent and be a good boy and girl. No. So this man in UK for just basically just doing what I do. I'm not, I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to agree with that. Okay. I'll love every single person that believes it. I'll pray for their salvation. I'll fight for their right to have their own free speech, but I am not going to say it's okay. And neither should you, okay? Because we're not cowards and we believe what he says, not what we say. All right, so he's arrested. Shows a video. And the cop, one thing I want you to see is the officer that's arresting him. He is, quote, here's my air quotes again, just doing his duty. Now, there is some legitimacy to that, okay? He is doing his duty. If a law gets passed, now hear me close. If a law gets passed, it says you cannot go on the internet and say anything bad about any of the things that have to do with gender or LGBTQ or you know, DEI or any of those things or whatever. It really wouldn't matter what it was, okay? You're going to go to jail if you do that. Justin Trudeau wants to pass a law that if you misgender someone, Okay, misgender them. Oh, I actually said ma'am instead of sir. Okay, or sir instead of, or I accidentally called this person a boy. I am, I'm he, she, it, you know what I'm saying? You understand what misgendering is. He wants to put a person, are you ready for this? In jail for life. I, that's not a joke. I'm not joking you. That guy is sick in the brain. I mean, there's something wrong with his brain. There really is. Some of these people, they start going down this path and then it, they fight for it and they become obsessed demon possessed in my opinion but that's you know so it shows this man being arrested you could see the cop can i can i speak to police officers listen is your job worth doing evil things is it well my family my 401k i'll lose everything lose everything then stop being deceived lose everything Oh, Jim, would you do that? Yeah, I absolutely would. If I was a cop and they said, you got to arrest this person for misgendering someone, I'd say, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, but what about your family? You know what? God would take care of my family and God would give me another job. If you, as an official, are willing to do evil things to keep your job, then you're as guilty as the people that made the law. Just as guilty. So, Jim, that's so harsh. Yes, but it might be harsh, but it's still the truth. Silence in the face of evil is evil itself. Enforcing, and we're not talking about jaywalking. We're not talking about some law that says you've got to get taxed more than you want to be taxed. No, no, no. 
No, we're talking about putting a person in jail, which is one of the most horrific things that can happen to a human being. Because you have no idea. I won't even go down that road of telling you, hey, Christ ambassadors, what happens to people who go to jail. It is hell. It is literally hell. And your willingness to put someone in jail over a moral conviction because you don't want to lose your stinking job, you ought to be the one that goes to jail. Somebody say amen. All right. That's my story and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> one of these days, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble. Number five. This is one that, um, wow, it, it shook me. This one shook me. It's 22 minutes and 22 seconds long, 22, 22. And you need to watch this one. This is an interviewer, an interview. Now, I'm, I'm putting these under the category of Kamala and Trump because these are the things that happened under Biden, Harris, and now Waltz. Okay. Some of you need to remember that Tim Waltz was the governor of Minnesota during the George Floyd riots. And I'm going to guarantee you, and I think you'll see it after you watch this, these footages are first time. They've never been on the internet before. You've not seen them. I promise you've not seen them because he has only now released them. Why? I'm not sure, but it's a guy named Chris Bird, an independent journalist guy who spent massive amount of time there in Minneapolis. Is that right? At, during the George Floyd riots. I guarantee you, you have a lesser concept of what actually happened, the vastness of what actually happened during those days. Remember the one reporter for, I don't know, the Alphabet Media, one of, I don't know, CNN, ABC, I don't know who he was. But he stood up and the stuff is burning behind him. And he goes, this is mostly a peaceful protest. <laughs> They're literally telling you, don't you believe what you see? Don't you, you believe what I'm telling you, okay? Because I'm the man. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm losing my compassion for people who, who will not, who just refuse to see things for what they are. Anyway, you're going to want to watch this one. I think this is when you're going to want to watch at least mostly all the way through. And remember while you're watching it, Tim Waltz, who was the governor. Now, they talk mostly about the mayor, but the mayor answers to the governor. And I'm not excusing that. The police answer to the city council. City council answers to the mayor. The mayor answers to the governor. There's always this chain of command. And the person at the top could have made a difference if not stopped what was going on. But you know what the problem is today? Our leaders are afraid. Would to God we had leaders who would do what is right because it's right, not because they're going to get more likes or more or keep their job or get a bonus or or afraid to get fired would to god i'm saying this loudly would to god we had leaders i pray for the day that we have leaders who will do what it's right not because other people like it or don't like it not because it's going to affect their job condition but because it's just simply because, not because it's, my, oh, it'll drain our finances, blah, blah, blah. All these reasons. When, when the city is on fire and you don't do anything about it, it's either because you're afraid or because you're part of it. That's it. You're either afraid to do what you're supposed to do. Call out the National Guard. Send in the police. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, we do have the ability through our law enforcement system to stop these things. We do. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. Any uprising like that can be stopped. Unless, of course, you let it get out of hand and then you have to call in National Guard from all 50 states kind of a thing. But even then it can be done. But the problem is nobody has the guts. Well, I shouldn't say nobody. Few leaders actually have the guts to do that because they don't want to go down in history as the guy that provoked, you know, blah, 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 you know. Right is right, wrong is wrong, start doing it, leaders, come on. All right, I know I'm preaching to the choir. So you're going to want to watch this. And the other thing I want you to see, too, is what happens when a spirit of violence... How can I say this? Linda and I lived in a city that had a military base that was... Um, Retired. It was it was non commissioned, okay, and it was in, it was derelict, and uh, for years it sat there. And sometimes kids would go up and down, smoke dope, do whatever. But you know the place stayed pretty much you know there. 
there came a point in which things really got out of hand up there. And we finally figured out that there was some occultic activity, that's all I'm going to say, occultic activity that went on up there, and things shifted at that point. We would go through this, this base, this radar base, and you could see where people had ripped up the metal roofing, climbed up on the roofs of these buildings, and tore up the riveted down metal roof. We're not talking about just a few spray paints and graffiti or knocking down this or, you know, punching a hole somewhere. We're talking about the kind of destruction that it takes almost, I don't want to over-exaggerate here, but almost like supernatural strength. You, I know some of you watch this program, you don't believe in this stuff, but listen, there is supernatural activity that you can open yourself up to. And when you see these videos, I believe you're going to see some of that. Okay? So, what starts out sometimes as a peaceful protest, which everybody thinks is okay, and I do too, okay? That's part of free speech. But you don't have the right to hurt people. You don't have the right to destroy property. That's when immediately we step in, okay? Some places are now starting to do that because we've had to learn the hard way. Anyway, you're going to see what I would call a spirit of violence. You're going to see an abandoned police precinct where the police literally fled their own police precinct because there was no one there to help them. They were being overrun. 800, I'll jump off this quick, 893, okay? Take a second. Let that number, write it in your mind right now and think about what I'm saying. 893 businesses. I don't think there are 893 businesses in the small town I just moved from. Well, I know there's not. Do you know how, many, how much, how vast that is? 893 bur businesses were burned to the ground. You see, you might have saw two or three here and there, and it's like, yeah, we've seen that before. You know, it happens in Portland. I, there's, this, to me, was the birthing. Okay, what happened with George Floyd? Not going to get into that issue. There's a lot there, but what happened? Listen, that's never justified. It's never, never, no. Innocent people being hurt. The people that were affected the most by that were the people that should not have been affected, the poor, okay? Anyway, 893 businesses burned down. There was anarchy, and it is pure anarchy. Biz, I spelled business wrong, okay? Sorry about that. If I don't correct this right now, I'll forget. 893 businesses burned down. Anarchy. Violence for violence sake. This is what happens to people when there's no consequence. Okay, I'm trying to give you some insight to human behavior. When the lights go out, either the proverbially or literally, it takes, they say, probably two to three days for things to go absolutely bonkers. People start rioting. No, listen, listen. We're not even talking about having a cause. This is my righteous cause. I'm out here because... This person or this injustice. No, 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 no. There are legitimate causes that people should hit the street for. You, this is the animalistic nature of man. This is the wicked nature of the sinful nature, the Bible calls it, of man. When unleashed and when it doesn't think there's going to be a consequence, begins to turn. Okay? Now that's human nature. Now, I'm not saying everybody does that, but a great number of people will. Okay, so what does this... Now, this is my last thing here. I know I'm going long on this, but I think this is really important. I want to leave you with a final thing about this particular 22, and 20, 22 minutes and 22 second long video. What does it say about the leadership of our country, the democratic leadership specifically of our country, that... Would, that would let the man who let his own cities and state burn, what does it say about our leadership who wants this man to be next in charge, second in command? What does that say? And is it possible that if that were to happen again while Harris and Tim Waltz were in charge, that they wouldn't let that happen again? She actually let it happen too. She didn't hardly lift a finger. All right.
Okay, enough of that. If it happens in this country, if riots break out in this country, and they're very likely to, almost assured to, if they're in charge, will they just go, burn baby, burn, okay? Instead of drill baby, drill. All right. Okay, this is the second part of this. I'm going to take oh, just maybe five or ten minutes at the most here. I'm going to have to go through these kind of quick. But we have a real problem right here in the United States of America. It's a growing problem, and it's going to get worse uh, probably before it gets better. And I, I want to be very serious and somber about this because this is not a joke. We have um, very many... There's a, there's a gang, it's the largest gang in Venezuela, it's called Tre, Tren, Tren de Agura, or Agua, not Agua because Agua is water, Tren de Agura, I think is how it's said. It means the train of Agura, and Agura is a, is a principal city in Venezuela. So it's like the violence train, okay? And this is a group of people that they're now saying probably has are being uh, escorted in, funded by, trained by Hamas. They're, they're really slow to say this, but it's gonna, you're going to see it eventually where, where this gang, largest gang in Venezuela, at least 5,000, is here in this country by the hundreds. Okay, One city alone, there's 400 that they know of in this one city you're going to see in the video. Um, and their, their plan is to take over. No exaggeration at all. Their plan is to take over. They're starting to attack military bases. They want to take over. Okay? Rick Turner had a dream a number of years ago where he saw these gangs coming in and doing unthinkable horrors. Well, this has begun. Okay? I don't know if it's exactly his dream, but it's happening. And it's not happening maybe a week from now. It's happening right now. As a matter of fact, they may already be at a place where it's going to be very difficult to tamp down. See, we have this policy about gangs that we don't want to get too rough on them because we don't want to be killed. You know, Mexico has got a great uh, record of this. It's like the harder they fight the gangs, the gangs come after their, the person that's fighting them. After the, you ever notice the guys in the military, the guys that got to wear masks and stuff now because they'll find their family. They'll, 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 they'll kill their family. They'll cut their throat. They'll throw their bodies out. So these guys are ruthless. We should not be playing around with these guys at all. First of all, we should never have let them in, but we did. Oh, leadership doesn't matter. All right, I hope I'm talking to some Christian out there that is still embracing this thought because I want to rebuke you in the name of Jesus. To think that leadership doesn't matter after the Bible said it does, after God said to pray for him, and now we're right in the middle of seeing horrifying things happen. How bad does it got have to get before you go, you know what, I was wrong. Leadership does matter. It matters to God. It matters to me. It matters to my kids. Say, hey, Tanya. Say, Jim, you're sounding awful harsh. I, I am trying to wake you up. And I know most of you guys are watching RDR, but I want people to wake up and realize, okay, this is not just about singing Kumbaya and praying for the salvation of a human soul. I pray for the salvation of all those guys' souls. For real. I really do. Okay? And if the time came that I thought I was to lay my life down so that one of them would be saved, I'd do it. I might tremble doing it, but I'd, I'd, I think I'd do it. Okay? Because what would a profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? A person going to hell is more important than anything else. But we're also called to defend the weak. We're also called to stand up for righteousness. We're not called to just open our doors and go, Hey, trade agua, I can't even say their name. Hey, Hamas. Hey, local uh, guy that's uh, got a machete, you know, come on in, you know, pillage my home, kill my family. It's totally okay because I love Jesus and it doesn't matter to me that much. Come on. I just, I am so sick of hearing this argument. Yeah, anyway, all right. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying be violent. I'm not saying go it out and scream out on the street corner of the veins. I'm just saying stand up. At least change your position that God cares about this. Okay. All right. And then pray about it. If you're not praying about it, you probably don't care about it. Mm. Boom. All right. Come on, you guys. Talk it up. Don't be mean, but talk it up. All right. I've got to be fast now because I'm out of time. Uh, I think there's how many videos? One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, okay, about seven videos. I'll go through them real fast here. I actually felt like the Lord said for me to keep it to a certain time today, so I'm trying to do that. Number one, illegal, make guns illegal, and then people will stop killing each other. Okay, here's a video. I've talked to this about Linda all the time. You can take away guns. You can take away swords. You can take away knives. Okay, you can take away clubs. You can take away rocks so that people can't. You will not change the violence in a human heart. Only God can do that. Okay, so you can outlaw guns. You can. This is a sword fight. It's 56 seconds long. I don't know what street it's at, but here's, a, here's some, some you know, foreign people, whoever they are, okay, probably migrants. Okay, I, couldn't, I didn't have time to figure all this one out, but they're standing having a machete fight in the street. They're like three or four guys. I'm talking big old long two foot. They're literally trying, they're fighting each other. Remember the, remember the armies of the enemy that came against Israel in the Old Testament? Sometimes they'd turn on each other and start killing each other. They're doing that now on the city streets. Why? Because we let them in. Because we didn't vet them. Because we have to have the vote. We've got to keep the Democrats in power because that's the most important thing, right? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Number two. So watch that one. Number two. Another one that's only exactly the same, 50 se 56 seconds long. Um, apartment complexes, you've probably heard this, have fallen to Tren de Agua. Pardon me if I'm saying it wrong. There have been two. Now, Colorado is one of these ultra-liberal, let's get rid of guns, let's defund the police states. And now they're reaping what they sow. These guys, these criminals, these gang members will go to the soft targets, okay? And if your governor makes your state a soft target, you either better get that governor out or you better change states because this will happen in your state too. I, I'm concerned about the state of Oregon and where I come from because they are Colorado and more so, okay? Anyway, these uh, gang members, they basically just went door to door and uh, kind of the whole... Uh, mafiosa thing where they're saying um, you're going to pay us uh, protection money uh, you know protection from whom well from you know whoever <laughs> us protection from us anyway they've taken over the complex now the rulers of the, the city and the state tried to make light of it don't you just hate that aren't you getting sick of leaders who make light of everything now I'm not saying we ought to make everything into a, like a you know, global crisis, God forbid, let's be truth tellers. But to, set, but to have video evidence of this happening and then to go, well, you know, gosh, you know, people are, you know, I think you're just making too much of it. You know why they say that? Is to protect themselves. That's it. That's the only reason. Because trust me, they probably have more intelligence than the average guy who's watching the video on the internet. They're scared. They don't want to be held accountable. They don't want to be known as that guy. Hi, Heather. Hi, Debbie. All right, I'm almost done. You guys that are just coming on, you got to go back and watch it and you don't want to miss the first part. All right, love you all so much. So this is an actual 911 call about uh, a whole bunch of terrorists coming in and trying to take over. Listen to it. I can't make you listen to these. I pray that you will. Number three, here, this one's just a picture. So when you link onto this one, it is a shelter in place uh, thing where in the city of Aurora, it's like, okay, they're saying don't make a big deal out of this, and yet the city itself initiates a shelter in place because of these Venezuelan gangs. Number four, a lot of people are concerned about who they listen to. They're not sure about Tucker. They're not sure about Elon. They're not sure about this person. They're going like, who can we believe? I don't know who to believe, so I'm just going to go in the corner and cry like a baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't be, you're not a babe. Don't be a babe. You can have it. All right. So a lot of people don't know who to believe. Dr. Phil. He has been one of the most balanced, trustworthy, to say the truth. I don't care what you think about it kind of a guy. You know, you've watched him where he's counseled these families. And, and he winds up just saying, dude, you're wrong. And you're not. And blah, blah, blah. But then he tries to help. He's, he's verifiably, you know, honest and good in every way. So he has now jumped on the bandwagon of trying to show some of the crazy that's going on in the country. So he goes on, he talks, this is short, a minute, it's just a clip from one of his longer programs, a minute, 26 seconds, and he is interviewing a guy 
who is, I think he's from Venezuela. It doesn't sound the clip who he is, but he's an official, okay? And, and this guy is saying, oh, no. No, no, the, the, what you've heard, that the, our prisons in Venezuela have let out the, the murderers and the gang members on the condition that they would go to America, that's, that's absolutely true. Okay, and that's what this, this official is saying. No, he says, no, it's absolutely true. They issued paperwork. They, it's, it's not, it's a conspiracy theory. Okay. Pretty sick of that too. All right, so this official says, the official number is about 10 million illegal migrants that have come in, into our country right now, 10 million. That's, that's bigger than a lot of states. But he says, really? He says, my, my opinion as one who works in this field is that it's more likely 15 to 18 million people. You know, the number gets so big, yeah, it doesn't even matter anymore. But what this is happening is it's playing out in our cities. If you haven't seen anything, it's because you're not paying attention. It's playing out all over in our cities, okay? And probably in your city, there are evidences of this happening. You may just not see a lot depending on how big your city is and so on. So you're going to want to watch that. It's a minute and 26 seconds long. Um, number five, this is a leaked document. Now, I don't have time to go into this real deep, but some of you know, uh, what's his name? James O'Keefe. He used to have Project Veritas. He was the one responsible for uh, doing the secret videos of abortionists that were uh, like selling baby parts. I know that's horrific, but some of this stuff that was almost nobody would believe actually hearing it from the person's mouth who did the dirty deed saying, oh yeah, we get X amount of numbers for this and oh, come on, you guys, talk it up. I'm almost done. Uh, yeah, we get this much for a leg. This much, I mean, stuff that is so barbaric, you can't even hardly bring yourself to believe this. He proved that it was true, okay? Somehow he shifted away from Veritas, and now he's got his own thing. Um, anyway, so he is now blowing the whistle on what's happening with you must look at this in depth, okay? Now, first of all, he gives a short video. Ah, I forgot to write the time on that. But he's talking about Trent de Agua, which again means train of Aragua. Uh, it's a state in Venezuela. He's saying there's like 400 of them in New York. And they have been given the green light by their officials. They, it is an organization, right? They're run by the guy at the top and so on. They've been uh, given the green light to attack police and the military. This is a big deal because they're showing us what their intention is. Typically, gangs stay away from the military. These guys are not. They literally are going after, they, they did, they drove right up. I mean, it's actually happening. They drove up to the gate of a military, jumped out with their machine guns and just started firing at the gate. If they would have succeeded in killing the guys at the gate, I guarantee you they'd have come inside. They want to take over. This is not a joke, okay? This is not, well, you know, supposition. This is actually happening, okay? So watch that one. Now, the next one after that, I adjure you. I put not just must read, I put must, 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 okay? This is a read. When you go on this link, and it's on, if I'm not mistaken, it's on X. Listen, X is becoming the number one source for correct information. I didn't like it, I didn't want to be on it, I wasn't sure about Elon, blah, 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 blah. You know what, every one of them are like that. You may think yours is safer or whatever. It's not. Okay. I think it would be wise for you to get an X account. Monitor how much time you spend on it. Don't go crazy. But you're getting information that they're, I, I promise you you're not getting anywhere else. All right. So that's just my opinion. You don't have to take it. Don't you judge me. So after his video, read this. He gives four. He gives the documents, in other words. You know how we're always talking about we bring the receipts. You need to put your physical peepers, your eyeballs, on the documents and read. It's what's called a U, uh, what do they call it? A U C, uh, no, a C U I. He mentions it two or three times. C U I, the acronym means Controlled Unclassified Information. So it's unclassified but they also want to control it, which is dumb because you can't control, anything goes on the internet, it's out of your control. Anyway, 
But they do that because they really don't want the public to see it. All right. Read it. Read it. Somebody say it with me. Somebody write it down in the, in the thing. Please. Read it. Read it. Read it. Okay? Only take a few minutes. When you go to this link, it's not a video. It'll show you one, two, three, four documents that are the actual documents released by the government. Read them. Read what it says about these gangs, how that they're in the cities. Okay? And then pray. All right? Um, the gang leaders themselves have actually sent letters of intent to local governments declaring that they're going to take over the city. Uh, you just can't. Yeah. All right. Last thing, and I'm done here. There's two um, interviews that you ought to watch. This is the good news. I like to put in some good news. Um, RFK did an interview on a very popular Christian broadcasting station called Daystar. Some of you know who it is. Some of you guys have watched it before. It is, in my lifetime, a fascinating to see people like RFK, people like Trump, people like, and I'm not suggesting these guys are all super, super duper right with God. I'm not. All I know is that they are willing to go in the public and declare that they are believers. Now, for some people, that doesn't mean anything. I, I'm not trying to get you to judge him. I'm just saying, this is a good interview with RFK on a Christian program. You're going to be glad you watch it. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and he's talking about the things that matter to him, like health and all that. And uh, the next one is uh, Tucker. And if you haven't seen this one, you probably are going to want to watch it. Tucker is having an experience with the Lord. That, I will say that much. I believe that's right. Uh, but not just Tucker. Um, the main, The other guy... Russell Brand, of all the guys in Hollywood, of all the guys in the, in the business, Russell Brand. I mean, the guy has been a womanizer, heroin addict. You see, we have to stop just assuming because the person has had a bad past, like me, that they can't go on to really fall in love with Jesus. And he looks like this. He does something I've never seen anybody do before. He's on this interview, and they're talking about God and our need as a country for, for the Lord and, you know, both of them, I think, well, Russell's a Catholic. I don't remember what Tucker is. Anyway, he, Tucker does something that I've never, you know, very rarely, at least seen somebody who says, Russell, will you pray? Is there anybody on the planet that goes, oh, yeah, one day Russell will pray on public television? <laughs> and not only does he pray, but he jumps out of his chair, falls to his knees, and prays a very good prayer. Now, we're talking about a guy that has made a public confession of Christ maybe a month or two ago. So, instead of criticizing, which I know it's easy to do, and some of you do, and I've done too, okay, not blaming anybody. I'm just saying, instead of criticizing, instead of looking for why it can't be real and why it can't be genuine, remember, you know, when I came to the Lord, I was still smoking dope and doing bad things. It took me a while, okay? Give these guys a break and maybe stop criticizing and start praying. If we spend as much time praying for them as we did criticizing, who knows what it happened. All right. Last one. And I've never done this before. And I'm way over my time. I've never done this before. This is an advertisement and it's extremely long. I can't even tell you how long it is because they blocked out the dime. You ever watch these advertisements where they just go on and on? And at the end, they try to sell you some. That's what this is. So you're saying, well, Jim, why would you put this on here? Because this guy is one of the most legitimate guys you're going to find in the world of what's, you know, what's going on in, our, in the culture. And he is talking about what he thinks is going to happen. And I agree with most of what he says, okay, about Donald Trump probably being elected and then trying to stop him from actually taking office because of the, uh, yeah. Anyway, just watch it. I don't have time to go into it. And, and again, if you can only watch 15 minutes, you probably get the gist of it in 15 minutes. And at the end, he is trying to sell a book. Some of you might want to. I put for the preppers because I'm pretty sure he's selling stuff about how to get ready for what's coming. He's saying in the next few months, it is going to, there'll be a melt, meltdown. And this is not a crazy guy. This is not just some guy that's trying to get, you know, <laughs> links on it or likes on his YouTube. This is a guy that's been in the CIA. He's been everywhere and knows everybody, and he's a very straight shooter. So, okay, I've given you a whole lot today, and uh, I appreciate you being on the program. Um, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate your support. Some of you have been 
uh, sending us some help financially, and I really appreciate that. We don't talk a lot about it, but, but we do need help. We do live by your support, 100%. We're 100%. Our income is 100% funded by the ministry that we do, whether we're guest speaking or doing this on the... So please don't... I mean, even though this is free, it's kind of not because that's how we live. Anyway, thank you for those who've been doing that. Those of you who want to help even small amounts, it, is, it, is, it makes a big difference to us. And we love you whether you can or can't, okay? But we are, we are in need of help. So anyway, thank you. God bless you. This should be on uh, YouTube and Rumble, hopefully by this evening and not by tomorrow. Thank you for those of you who said yes to my ask. I asked you to, even though you watch this program, to please go on YouTube just enough to leave a comment or two to help those algorithms push the message out because we are being shadow banned for sure. So, all right, I love you guys. Thanks for listening the whole time. God bless you. Go out, bless somebody today. Don't just think about yourself, think about somebody else and give yourself permission to have a great day. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this link with somebody else. God bless you.